Oh hey there, thanks again for tuning into Moonshine Gaming. Today we're going to be discussing the top 5 rarest and most expensive Sega 32X games. Alright, baby. Increase the power of the unit 40 times. 32X. Welcome to the next level. you spill your drink? I don't have a drink. Uh oh. X. Now, as per usual, we have a few parameters for this list. We're just going to be using North American complete inbox pricing to order the games on this list. So what that means is that the game case, instruction manual, and game cartridge are going to be included for the prices on this list. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we've got T-Mech. This was a virtual reality tank fighting game that was released in 1995. The game was originally a sit-down arcade game that was released a year prior, which offered an updated riff on Battlezone mixed with the network play of Doom. Several T-Mac cabinets could be linked together for multiplayer tank death matches. Unfortunately, when T-Mac took the trip home on the 32X, the biggest attraction for the game had been completely removed. With no network capabilities, the 32X wasn't able to replace the incredible arcade version of the game. T-Mac is set up as a tournament. You start at the bottom of a challenge ladder with a handful of rivals. If you finish the match with the most points, which are earned by blowing up other tanks, you advance to the next round. At the start of the game, you choose your tank from a garage of six possible choices. Each tank has its individual ratings, which includes speed, power, and more, as well as a unique special weapon, such as a POV missile or a blinder that obstructs your opponent's vision. The game suffers from bad pixelation, especially when you get close to other tanks. The tanks are apparently digitalized photos of actual tank models, kind of like the fighters in Mortal Kombat. From a distance, they look like a blob of blocky pixels. With the network features removed from the 32X version, this game doesn't hold up. With its horrendous visuals, mindless AI, and loose controls, this game is a hard pass for me. The current market value of this game is $335. Next up, we've got Blackthorn. This is a cinematic platforming game that was released in 1995. This is technically a port of the SNES version of Blackthorn, but there was some additional content and improvements made to the 32X version. You play as Captain Blackthorn, a former US Marine officer, and your mission is to free prisoners from the evil warlord Sarlacc. There's a total of five missions, and one's actually exclusive to the 32X port, and they consist of four to five stages each. The gameplay involves blowing up locked doors with hover bombs, finding keys to create bridges, and using remote wasps to detonate computer terminals. You have a shotgun to fight enemies, but interestingly enough, you can hold up on the D-pad to hide in the shadows. This stealth element greatly enhances the action-oriented gameplay and forces you to time your shots with a more deliberate pace. While shotgun ammo is unlimited, extra weapons are not and I like how the game puts emphasis on resource management. There's also some great puzzle elements in the game, and occasionally you'll have to avoid combat to actually pass levels. The level design is the game's strongest point, and the levels give me Super Metroid vibes. The adventure is lengthy, but the addition of password save points make it manageable. The pre-rendered graphics, animation, and color definition are fantastic. One of the only downsides to this game is the run and long jump mechanic. It isn't very fluid, and it can result in some cheap feeling deaths. The 32X version of this thinking man's plot Platformer is much better than the SNES version in my opinion, and it's definitely worth a play. The current market value of this game is $423. Now for a quick word from the sponsor of this video. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody's sponsoring this tiny channel. But if you guys enjoy content like this, we put out video game related content every single Thursday and you can consider subscribing to Moonshine Gaming to stay up to date with future videos. Back to the list. Next up we've got Pitfall the Mayan Adventure. This is a side scrolling action platforming game that was released in 1995. This is a port of the Genesis version, but the 32X version runs at 30 FPS instead of 60, so there is some noticeable slowdown when it comes to gameplay. The side-scrolling style and visuals of the game are very reminiscent to Disney's Aladdin and Lion King. Most of the stages featured in the game, though linear in nature, are large and populated with multiple obstacles, enemies, and environmental hazards, requiring the player to traverse the stages by running, jumping, climbing, swinging, shooting, and dodging enemies. 
Other areas that are featured later become more maze-like and exploratory, making the player take different routes to reach the end, and in certain stages, a boss must be fought in order to progress further. All stages also contain beneficial items and weapon ammunition to be collected, and you can also find hidden letters that spell out the word Pitfall, among other secrets. Pitfall on the 32X does very little with the extra power of this console. The colors are just as grim as they are on the Genesis and SNES, however the animation is pretty good. Harry's moves are full of expression, especially when he takes one of his bungee jumps. Unfortunately, this retro revival feels more like a reminder of how great the original Pitfall on the Atari used to be, and does little to differentiate itself from other 16-bit platformers. The current market value of this game is $424. Next up, we've got World Series Baseball starring Dion Sanders. This is a traditional baseball simulation game that was released in 1995. The game's nearly identical to the World Series Baseball 95 game that was released on the Sega Genesis, but with the minor title and box art change. I'm sure a few people were tricked into buying both versions of the game, thinking that the 32X version had some differences with the name change. But other than a few camera angle changes during gameplay, it didn't have any changes. It was actually the first series to obtain full licensing rights, meaning it was able to use real-life team names and real-life player names, whereas most other baseball games only had access to one of these, if any at all. It also widely popularized the new near-uniform behind-the-plate camera view, with the perspective being mounted where the catcher is positioned. From here, it promoted a very simplistic batting mechanic, complemented by a more involved-than-usual pitching game. There were some downsides to the controls, though. When batting, there's no directional control, and you were only offered three types of swing, normal hit, power hit, and bunt. This made batting solely about timing, and less about directing your bat for hitting. Pitching is fairly similar to recent games, allowing you to aim anywhere in the strike zone and choose between a few speeds. Minus the slightly annoying game commentary, this is a fun baseball game, but it's kind of weird how they fully changed the name of the World Series Baseball 95 game, but made no major changes to the gameplay. The current market value of this game is $596. Next up, for the break, the second baseman. Next up, number one, Amazing Spider-Man Web of Fire. This is a side-scrolling action-adventure game that was released in 1996. This is a Sega 32X exclusive, and in the main storyline, the terrorist organization Hydra and the new enforcers orchestrate a plan to shroud New York City under an electrical plasma grid, trapping its citizens. Spider-Man must confront each of the new Enforcer's members, fail Hydra's plans, and save the city with the aid of Daredevil. Spider-Man can jump, punch, kick, duck, crawl, climb certain walls, shoot webs to swing, and collect web fluid to shoot web projectiles against enemies. As I said before, Spider-Man can also get the assistant from fellow superhero Daredevil by rescuing him in the first stage and collecting DD tokens scattered throughout the stages. You'll start the game with three lives at the beginning of the game, and extra lives can be acquired along the way, but once all lives are lost, the game is over, although the player does have a choice to continue playing after dying. Unfortunately, the controls aren't great, and they almost feel slippery. Spider-Man feels like he moves too quickly, and you'll regularly be running into enemies and dangerous objects. The collision detection feels a bit off as well, and your health isn't even replenished between stages. What gives? For the most part, the stages feel generic, but there are some occasions where the aesthetics look great. In my opinion, I think this game is a missed opportunity, and if the level design and combat were a bit more refined, this game could have had a lot of potential. The current market value of this game is $1,975. Do you have any ideas for future videos? You can let us know in the comments below. But that's going to do it for this one. We'll see you next time.